The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain apart. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his garments became white as light. And behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah, talking with him. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is well that we are here. If you wish, I will make three booths here, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. He was still speaking when, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell on their faces and were filled with awe. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and have no fear. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, Tell no one the vision until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we celebrate the Feast of the Transfiguration of the Lord. It is the celebration of a moment when our Lord Jesus Christ was glorified and he revealed the full truth about himself. As the Son of Man, who is also the Son of God, fully man and fully divine. Today, at the peak of Mount Tabor, the full truth about Christ's nature was revealed to all of us through these three disciples, Peter, James, and John. The Lord revealed himself that he was not just like any other prophets or messengers of God, God that preceded him. In fact, he is God himself who incarnated himself in the flesh of man through the will of the Father and the power of the Holy Spirit via the womb of his mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary, as we confess in the Creed. And he is truly the Messiah that was long awaited by the people of God, to whom God promised the coming of his deliverance. The appearance of Moses and Elijah, the greatest prophets, affirmed this truth. For Moses represented the law of God, which he gave to his people through Moses. And Jesus is the fulfillment of the law. While Elijah represented the prophets of God, and as mentioned, the prophecies were all fulfilled in him. It is an important event. But what is the significance about this event of the transfiguration of the Lord today? What is the teaching? What is the lesson behind this? Brothers and sisters in Christ, the transfiguration scene in the Gospels comes immediately after Jesus had spoken of himself as the Son of Man. Not only as the Son of Man, but as one who must undergo great suffering and to be killed afterwards. Jesus and his disciples had just set out on the journey to Jerusalem, the city where Jesus would be crucified. It was the beginning of the way of the cross, so to speak. And shortly after that, he told his disciples, I'm going to go through this suffering and I will die. Most of his disciples were not happy with this because they were thinking of the glorification that Jesus would become the king and maybe themselves would become ministers. Now to talk about suffering and death was difficult for them to understand. And so after this struggle, Jesus took them to the mountain. And in this extraordinary vision of Jesus, 
they saw this Jesus who talked about his own suffering, glorified. He's the son of man who is glorified. So they were in a sense given a glimpse of what lay beyond the crucifixion and death of Jesus. A glimpse of the resurrection. So life does not end at death. So the purpose of the transfiguration of our Lord was to encourage and strengthen the apostles who were depressed by their master's prediction of his own passion and death. It was meant to strengthen them. Like the apostles, we really need and want reassurances from Jesus that our earthly confusions and uncertainties will not last forever. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as we try to commit ourselves to the Lord, we encounter difficulties, challenges in our lives. Maybe in a way we want to organize our families, but you see that we don't get that through. We want to organize our society, and that doesn't happen. We want to commit ourselves fully to the service of the Lord, of the Lord but unfortunately we meet a lot of challenges and problems in life. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the feast of today shows us that Jesus faced these same challenges in life. He faced many opposition and obstacles to his work among his people. He was rejected, you remember, and condemned by the priests and by the Pharisees. And again, many others refused to listen to him or to believe in him. However, Jesus was so focused on his mission because he knew the, on, the end is not failure but uh, victory or glory as we are taught today. He and his disciples went down the mountain. They had to go down the mountain. He was ready to face it down the mountain. He encouraged his disciples to do the same. In the gospel of today, we hear that the disciples wanted to remain there, to remain in glory, but Jesus encouraged them, let's go down and face the suffering, because after suffering is when they, they would experience glory. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let us today, first of all, rejoice, because God is so loving and so merciful towards each and every one of us. He has given us perfect gift of his son, Jesus, through whom the truth about salvation, our own salvation, has been revealed to us. And then let us all know that sacrifices and difficulties that each and every one of us may have to face in life are not the end. The end is the resurrection. Today, God is giving us a message of hope in Jesus' transfiguration, in moments of doubt, moments of despair and help helplessness. Jesus' transfiguration reminds us of our own coming transfiguration in heaven and helps us to reach out to God to hear again his consoling words, this is my beloved son, daughter, in whom I am well pleased. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us all face our challenges with courage and strength. Just as the, the resolution shown by the Lord, he chose to come down to the mountain of his glory and down towards his crucifixion and death. He was resolved to go through suffering because he knew at the end there will be glory. Let us all follow the example and the humility of our Lord in obeying fully the will of God. And by doing that, we shall be with him. By doing what he has told us to do, we shall always end up in victory, in glory. Let us today pray that the Lord helps us to continue deepening our faith in him so that we go through our problems without fear, with total faith, so that at the end, we end up not in failure, but in victory, in glory with the Lord. Happy feast to you all. 
and may God bless you.